The Greenwich Historical Society has an exhibit opening on March 1st. It's called From Italy to America. And uh, joining me now is uh, the video biography production uh, company uh, founder uh, of Time Stories, uh, Emmy Award-winning creative uh, director Peter Savigny. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, From Italy to America. Peter, welcome. Thanks very much. Good morning. You came up from White Plains. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming in. Certainly. Uh, uh, tell us about this uh, From Italy to America. What's, what's the exhibit all about? Well, it's honoring the founding members of the Italian uh, community who came over, actually, at any time, but mostly during the turn of the last century. Uh, it seems two, predominantly two towns in Italy supplied uh, the backbone of the workforce for Greenwich. Uh, they came over and occupied a variety of trades, uh, from laborers to um, you name it, and uh, Greenwich is finally taking the time to honor the efforts that they did in the founding and the development of this town. Okay, and how, how, what was your role in, in, in this exhibit? Well, the Greenwich uh, Historical Society and I have been in communication for a few years, and we've been looking for an opportunity to work together, and they approached me saying that this exhibition, we're, we'd like to interview some of the uh, the descendants and some of the recent arrivals and to talk about what the experience was, what, what the motivation was, what it was like coming to another country, sometimes with your family, sometimes entirely on your own, and to start anew to, for a land of opportunity, if you will. Okay, so it's a lot of, a lot of videos. Of people can watch the videos exactly. and see this. So we interviewed uh, 46 different people. Uh, that many showed up for the, through uh, either hearing about it on the radio or in the newspaper and uh, through, through communication through their, their town. And uh, we talked about how did they connect to Greenwich, what was their heritage, why did they come, what was their grandparents' motivation, how did and subsequent hardships, uh, life the Depression, um, and the family communities. Tremendous, tremendous community and interrelated. Uh, and a lot of uh, people that are descendants from similar backgrounds. And, and um, I guess the way I, the, the way I heard it, because uh, because I, I, my, my descendants from, from Italy is that it depends on which boat they were on, how far up the shore, whether you settled in Greenwich or Bridgeport or even farther Stamford or wherever. Interesting. That I didn't hear. I did know yeah. that they, a lot of the times they needed to be uh, either sponsored by someone who was already living here, saying that they would take care of them, or uh, one person came out on their own and either heard it through a, a relative or found that there was work to be had here. Worked for a number of years, went back, said, "You, you won't believe the land of our." opportunity come on let's get the family and the kids and come back over and they came over either in groups of 10 or 20 or in subsequent years uh, mm -hmm. they'd come through uh, tell us about the tie-in with uh, uh anthony riccio and uh the uh, from italy to america the photographs uh, which which i guess is out of, out of new haven right well his photographs i think were the the impetus for this uh, they were they're showing the, the how the, his community was changing and how the um he needed to preserve what he could capture and that, that when we realized that they could have a traveling exhibition and we could take part of that, that was the seed that we built this Italy to America around. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of your goal, like for people that are going to go to this exhibit, what would you like them to get out of it? Well, it's, I subscribe to the three E's, if you will, uh, educational, entertaining, and emotional. And I hope that they're going to not only get a little education, but they'll see that there's a similarity between all of our pasts, that there was a, we all had hardships and aspirations, sometimes successes, sometimes uh, incomplete. So uh, learning, seeing what, what transpired before, commonalities, um, mm -hmm. and the such. Okay, because for somebody from myself, as an Italian background, I'd be interested in what you think people of other backgrounds would be. Oh, absolutely. I, I think there's going to be a commonality. Even if you have been in, in America for generations, I think you'll see how times have changed so rapidly. I mean, in the last hundred years, it's, it's phenomenal, the explosive growth. And it is really the first generation that's uh, been able to capture photos, music, uh, movies, and to have that all in one place and be able to, in a sense, look backwards into a time capsule is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Was there a certain time frame of people that were, were coming here? Well, it seems that during the middle 1860s when the uh, Italian uh, Italy was going through, a civil, if you will, a civil war, the North was invading the South, um, the, the laborers, the peasants, for lack of a better term, found that they were left with a little opportunity. So they needed to come to a place where they could carve out a new future, and that's when the massive uh, emigration began from Italy. So that, I'd say between 1860 and 1920 was pretty much the large push. Millions of people left Italy and never returned. Now, the people that you interviewed, how, how much did they know about their uh, an ancestors? Quite a few. I'd be su I was surprised at how much they, they had first-person accounts. A lot of, you know, Many were in their 60s and 70s and remembered their grandparents' stories. Uh, some were fresh off the boat in the 70s themselves with a very strong Italian accent saying, I'm glad to come here. I'm so glad to have the opportunity. I, my grandparents or my great-grandparents started, and uh, we, we followed suit in time. You mentioned two, uh, two areas of Italy that came here. Where were uh, they from? Rose Casenza and Mora de Sanctis. There okay. were two towns that uh, I guess it was just 
common for once they came, they just kept coming. Do, do you know if they're near each other? I honestly don't. I'm yeah. learning now. I'm still in the process of building the videos. I'm studying the maps and learning about, you know, it's, it's an exploration for me as well. Okay. Is, is everything ready to go? But you, you mentioned, I mean, you still have like about, about three weeks or so. Yeah, re- ready is relative. We're, we're shopping at the bit. We're getting close to it. I okay. mean, the yeah. exhibition's coming okay. together. This is part of your company, timestories.com, that, that do you what interview people that actually can give videos of themselves for their kids? Exactly. I, I typically stuff? interview the senior member of the family and ask them what they remember about their ancestors, their upbringing, their uh, childhood, work, career, family, and we collect their photos and images, anything they have, home movies and so forth, and create sort of a Ken Burns-style movie of their life that allows them to share their story now and for generations to come. All right. So this so this exhibit, there will be the video of these people, and I guess there will be black and white pictures and things like that no, it's going well. to be. I'll have an entire room, if you will, dedicated towards the stories that came from our interviews and the materials that the people brought in for exhibition. How about music? That's always a big part of it. Well, I will add music to the bottom of the un- underline, but it's, it's more for... Um, atmosphere than it is for anything else. I do have to obviously be careful not to use copyrighted music, so it's going to be somewhat generic tenterellas and so forth. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And any plans for any uh, future projects with the Historical Society? I hope so. Uh, yeah. We're going to talk again in April. I'm going to hopefully talk to the community about the opportunity to create some of these for yourselves and how easy and quick it is and how it really does extend for generations. You're creating a, a, an heirloom piece that's a legacy. Right. Similar to, and, and we were talking about this before, they have an oral history uh, you know, at, at the Historical Society. How how is this compared to that? I don't know the specifics about their oral history, but I imagine it's somewhat similar in that it allows people to come in and discuss what they feel is pertinent to their history and their past. I suppose with me, it's a bit more guided. I have a questionnaire that works, or more of a topic list that we walk our way through and touch on all the subjects that maybe they forgot to mention or didn't think like, oh, that's right, no one's asked me about that in years. So. All right, we're speaking with Peter Savigny, and Peter, you, you know your your background is is French, so so thanks for doing something for for for, for my homeland. Absolutely. Italy. Great. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks to be here. And again, that's from Italy to America. It opens March 1st at the Greenwich Historical Society.